If it's good architecture, sh it, and it's great, you know, I mean, it should be sustainable, you know. But if it's not good, I mean, I don't think you should want an issue win an award. I couldn't practice if I wasn't teaching the way I do. I couldn't teach if I wasn't practicing the way I do. Welcome to PA Talks, a podcast where we dive deep into the ever-evolving world of architecture, design, and technology. I'm Hamita Sanzade, your guide in this captivating journey. Today, we're excited to have Marcelo Espina, a force in global architecture and co-principal of Los Angeles-based Patterns Architecture Studio. As an esteemed educator, Marcelo has taught in SciArc and lectured worldwide, sharing his vision that merged design, innovation, and education. Marcelo's journey began in Rosario, Argentina, and led him to Columbia University for his Masters of Architecture. His work, which is celebrated through awards like Architectural Leagues, Emerging Voices, and various AIA's accolades, challenges conventional boundaries. He has co-authored pivotal texts like Embedded, Material Beyond Materials, and Mute Icons, contributing significantly to architectural discourse. Join us as we discuss Marcelo's transformative ideas and methodologies, shedding light on his impact of the future of architecture. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you receive the future updates. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Marcelo, for stopping by in our office, and it's good to see you in Istanbul. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to be in this amazing city. Thank you so much. So how do you find Istanbul? Do you like it? <laughs> I love Istanbul. I think it's one of my top down, one of my uh, uh, best cities. Um, you know, if I had second to time here, second time here. Yes. Nice. Nice. So uh, uh, you just handed me this book, which is Mute Icons. Uh, I'm going to definitely read it. Uh, I had some overviews before uh, about the book. Uh, so maybe you can just uh, tell us what is the book about, what do you mean by mute icons, and to our audience so they can understand the methodologies that you want to talk about in architecture and share your ideas. Yes, uh, thank you. First, I'm going to hold you to it. There's a lot of writing into it, far more than even I could actually stomach, you know. So, uh, you know, be my guest, you know. I feel I think you read like one, one, uh, one fifth or even a tenth of it, I think you'll be fine, you know. But uh, as all good books, I feel like there's got to be uh, a good idea, good content, and you know, nice object. But most importantly, uh, for me as an architect. Uh, a lot of good pictures and i feel like um the, the book does that you know if i want to kind of introduce it uh, superficially let's say um so, so mute icons is it's really an idea book it, it's our it really puts forward our view and our notion of what uh, public uh, civic-minded architecture uh, should be should do should consider uh in in this uh, particular kind of convoluted critical time that we are in and what I mean the time that we're in it's the time that maybe we've been in the last 20 years you know with like different crises followed by different moments of optimism and challenges to the to the field and to the discipline so Mute Icons it's it's a, a recorded book about images it's about images in architecture and it's about uh, how to conceive interrogate uh, analyze look perceive and maybe reposition images uh, in architecture. Uh, the images are historical, uh, vis-a-vis -vis precedents, you know, all back to ancient history and it's and are contemporary and uh, related to our, our own work, of course. And and what we try to do is is somehow argue that that uh, contrary to you know the kind of shock and awe of Sort of technology and 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 uh, only optimism about the future, which we obviously have and share, and is part of our core of, of what we do. The kind of progressive architecture, the sort of forward-looking ideas, the speculation. Architecture has to kind of find, you know, sort of more mitigated, uh, maybe more intrusive, and maybe withdrawn ways of positioning things, you know, object buildings, uh, images that are a bit more paradoxical, you know, so Mute Icons is, is really about like positioning a kind of paradoxical 
uh, understanding of what uh, public architecture uh, is and, 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 and can be and is the potential to be and, and argues that it's not far from being a crowd pleaser uh, of like, you know, producing things that are just instant uh, poster child, Instagrammable picture. Architecture can, can still maintain a certain, uh, not autonomy, but a certain kind of uh, position as a, as a cultural irritant, you know, and this is something that we're really interested in and we've been, and we, we seek to argue from a kind of contemporary and also from a historical approach, you know, sort of trying to, in a world making kind of way, rewrite a little bit of a history uh, of mute iconicity, meaning like put a bunch of projects, um, a lot historical, some more contemporary and including our work, uh, that we think are doing some of these things uh, to basically produce an architecture that is a, that that is not just uh, uh, for entertainment that that it has a kind of value beyond the 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 first time that you see the the few times that that you actually can maybe get to enjoy it you know and there's plenty of example examples going that direction and and we try to do work in that direction and so it's a bit of a kind of pushback. Uh, but not in a reactionary way. I feel like it's also in a way that is say push it forward. You know, let's let's get on with you know a lot of good things about technology, a lot of good things about like the future. And but but understanding that architecture is a is a particular animal. You know, architecture is not fashion. It's not art. Uh, it it is something else, and it's deeply enmeshed in, in culture. And we have something to say about it. You know, and so by you know uh, by writing, by talking about all these things. Uh, I mean, we're we're saying that. And you you mentioned about uh, architecture is not fashion, and ar architecture is not uh, uh, just only about the probably aesthetics. And uh, but when we look at your works, you also emphasize a lot on the form, mass, and the uh, geometries that uh, you know somehow form the buildings, and uh, or they they. They create the architecture. What what type of methodologies you follow when you in in your architecture or in your design uh, philosophies at patterns? Yes, I mean I think you're, you're totally right. Um, it might seem as an oxymoron for me to say that you know architecture is not fashion, it's not art, and then this is a book about images, and you associate images with the whole Instagram culture, the the TikTok, all of that. So. It's it's paradoxical, but it's also true, which is we're trying to go really, really deep into these things, and 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 also not deny that in our own work, you know, we do a whole lot more than images. Images, if anything, is just the end of a process, let's say. And you know, we work with drawings, we work with diagrams, we work with like geometries. You know, we we draw and plan, and we still sketch. We do all of the above. Um, to get to those process. And yes, our work is really based on, on, on form slash mass and uh, slash articulation and many, you know, and, and, and sort of moves in between these ideas. What are the processes? Um, I mean, we sort of look back and, and always try to keep a kind of tab on what the process of each project is. You know, we're very attentive. We're not a process driven practice. Uh, but we try to keep a tab in terms of how things are happening and to, to understand maybe the consistency and understand also the, 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 the flaws of it. Uh, it really has to do with, with the development of, of maybe form in relationship with, with context, in relationship with environmental and uh, social and cultural ideas. Uh, but there's that, I guess there's a lot more to it. And, and um, you know, so no diagram can can really just take stock of exactly how certain things happen, you know. So, and of course, there are plenty of influences, you know, from the way we, the way we draw to the way we render to our relationship with uh, photography and and uh, in in the arts in terms of how to depict and create narratives in terms of the work we do, uh, especially as it reaches the public, as it reaches culture, which is where we aspire to to position and and to be. Um, I know I didn't really answer your question. No, I you know you you completely you answered and you you mentioned great points and you mentioned about context and cultural aspects with these current technological developments. How we can preserve or how we can balance uh, these historical 
uh, aspects and also contextual relations of the architecture with its surrounding, with the advancements that we have, how not to get lost in this in this flood of you know idea generations and in this flood of you know finding new typologies for buildings how how to preserve that i i think it's one that's your question is one of the most critical questions you know uh, nowadays and and one that i i've been thinking and, and we've been thinking as a practice for a while while also reflecting on on a lot of the work we do uh which is um, a lot of the work is ground up, you know, in the in the U.S. and elsewhere, including some work in the in, in the Middle East, you know, in Saudi Arabia, especially, where it's all new. But but also a lot of the work, um, especially in Los Angeles, where everyone everyone, including ourselves, have a kind of understanding of the culture of the new, the perpetual culture of the new. Um, we have a lot of you know encountered a lot of existing buildings that we had to somehow work with him, you know, and, and I think finding finding the value of whatever that context is, you know, whether it's in Argentina or it's in, in the US or it's in Bali where we're working or, or, or in, a, in a Greek island uh, or in Saudi Arabia, context is very, very different, culture is very different, materials and methods and just the kind of urban textures are completely different and I finding ways of somehow like um, somehow involving those uh, answering connecting in some in some levels uh, it's incredibly important and and so of course when you're a foreigner you have a different relationship with context than when you know when you're a local and and so if you're hired to do a building you can mimic just context because a you probably do it wrong you don't have an understanding of it b that's not the kind of mission for which you were even asked to 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 you know to to participate. So I I don't know I'm 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 always keen in understanding a kind of deeper means of context. You know it's kind of like you look at it, you go visit, you do research, you understand things, and then somehow you you just go with it. And hopefully you find ways of like um, those ideas getting inside your work in more uh, substantial, essential, but also maybe deeper ways, you know. And, uh, and of course, you know, I mean, the idea is that you will produce something that is both kind of familiar and strange. It's not like, it's not one or the other directly, um, but it is a challenge, you know, cultural. And uh, if we talk about the uh, advancements in tech and uh, that they are having a huge impact into our profession, how... How, how do you envision the future of our practice? Uh, if you want to mention a couple of points or if you want to draw a, uh, outlines or borders or uh, how how do you envision the future? This is always a tricky question for me. I'm not a... <clears throat> theorist or... <laughs> no, I, well, I'm certainly not a theorist. I'm a... I'm a, I'm a practicing architect yes. and I'm an educator of course that's why you can envision it easily yes probably. and I have a stake on it but I also have a I'm also get I'm gonna get back to the education as well no for sure <laughs> I do have um I, I'm not in the business of predicting the future and, and and there's a lot of my colleagues that will will do that and and I sometimes they do well I've just you know and the reason I am not interested in that is because i've seen enough of, of waves you know since i was you know educated in you know in new york in colombia in the heyday of digital design when really just started and and i've seen enough people predict like oh you know books are not going to you know libraries are not going to exist anymore everything is going to be digital and 20 years later we're still building libraries and they're amazing, you know, they're amazing technological places that they're not used to do what, what they did now, but, but they're still books, you know. And so, so, you know, and I've seen a lot of people that they're just, this is going to be the end of this as we know it. And, and maybe some things change, but things don't change that much as, as we anticipated. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of a sort of wait and see in, in some cases, of course, you know, I'm uh, excited about like some of these advances and uh, we use them, 
but we also learn to use them in ways that are not like, you know, we don't just get on the next wave um, and too far because I feel like uh, that's maybe the role of like younger generations. I think every generation has a kind of role to play and and we have already a role to play and and uh, and so we're trying to refine we're trying to maintain the critical aspect given a certain work we do and a certain um arena you know and so i and i feel it's okay that you know i don't have to be we don't have to be involved in every kind of measure you know uh, uh studying architecture even before 2000 and you've seen in even in columbia university uh Back then, the hype about digitization, the use of parametrics yeah. and all these uh, scripting to in, in architecture. Uh, in the last twenty five years, how does it change the the way the the things that we were thinking about? All these tools will change the architecture, and uh, how do you think these tools have changed the way we did architecture in the last twenty five years? Because you were uh experience you were practicing probably before even uh, most of these tools came to architecture or we started using them and now we have uh tools that are somehow uh, a part of the process that we practice actually the part of the process that we yes. think and provide solutions uh maybe you can give us a little bit of an insight what was the discussions back then and what are we doing now? Are, are we so far by the dreamland that was uh, somehow being drawn back then? Or how was it? Um, I mean, I was, I was lucky to be in a moment of uh, education in, in, uh, in, in Colombia where there was still, you know, there was, there was an excitement about what these tools will do. I mean, like, you know, whatever, alias at the time, you know, that became Maya. This was, by the way, $20,000 computer and software that costed the same, that only two people I knew in the entire school had it, you know, and they were working, you know, one one for, for Greg Ling and the other one for, for Jesse and Nanako, and, and it was, you know, a friend of mine, actually. And, and, you know, it was just a very, it, it's a different thing, and meaning... It was the only time where I think, you know, people were really, really ahead of the curve, you know, and you graduated and you know what to do with all these things. You know, if you didn't start your own office, you have very, very few places where you could actually, you know, uh, work. Um, so we, I mean, I, I started doing my own things and they were like, and in Argentina also, four places and then back and forth and then back to LA. Um, I mean, it, it entailed a lot of, you know, process of, understanding how you would even uh, put into mechanisms. You know, this was like obviously, you know, projects like Yokohama Port Terminal by FOA at the time was sort of being built. And at the same time, in parallel, you know, Frank was building the, the Guggenheim Museum, which sort of changed the world. So I don't know, for me, I think those, those things are, are interesting um, in terms of how even like you consider, um, you consider the impact of technology, the relation between academia and culture, um, the the relation of technology and how it changes, you know, where like, uh, I mean, I, I think after a whole wave of digital and those two projects being paradigmatic of like two very different approaches, but sort of related, uh, there's also a kind of backlash and, and other things come up, you know, a kind of and other forms of regionalism, which add something to it. You know, I think add ideas of materiality, texture and color, a reminder that architecture is not just about continuity and, 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 um, and ground and wave uh, making or pattern making. It's about something much deeper and that you will need that, you know. And so I like, I don't know. I mean, it's such a complicated uh, uh, history and, and how it evolves that that i think it's it's hard to just say one thing or the other and um but um but i don't know i mean i um i'm just having like you know different kind of flashbacks <laughs> in terms of you know in terms of how that how that works uh all i will say is that again and we've done our fair share of testing, you know excitement where like Absolutely. you know we will do competitions and you'll try to use the latest thing you know being at Sayark, of course and and my partner teaches at UCLA, but especially Sire, give me a kind of uh, 
it's like a first row view of many of these things, you know, I mean, through my students, through the work we do there, through, you know, studios that, that, that I taught, that co-taught, uh, through some of my younger colleagues that, that keep bringing new ideas and new tools and new approaches to things. So, uh, but that, you know, somehow, and this is where kind of education and practice are different, you know, like when it comes to our office, when it comes to our own work, we try to be very, very selective about how we approach it. And I feel people should do the same, you know, in their own offices, because I think it, I think it's a very different thing, you know, to, you know, how to approach a problem through education and also how to actually relate to, to practice, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, uh, you've been teaching in many, uh, many universities, Yale, Harvard, and SciArc for sure. And how do you see the landscape of architectural education uh, with all these technological advancements, uh, mentioning AI with these uh, recent advancements? I mean, SciArc has always been at the forefront of, of uh, technology in, uh, in architecture since, I don't know, the, the late 2000s for sure and until now. And we're obviously in a maybe what we will consider kind of post-digital uh, uh, moment where like, of course, the digital is there, but there's all sort of, you know, I think most of the most interesting people, they find ways of like um, hybridizing a little bit. You know, it's not just entirely one thing. They, they sort of mix it up. Um, so, I mean, I think the, I mean, we, and I feel like when I talk, we, it's SciArc specifically are sort of committed to do that, uh, to doing that. Of course, there's many different approaches, you know, even within the school, there is a pretty large school and there's like, you know, battles or conversations about like the meaning of this, how far you have to go in that direction, the matter of the discipline in relationship with that, the matter of history and precedent, um, you know, AI, which is something that of course it's been in the, you know, now it's like all over, but you know, it's been in the window of, you know, architecture for, for a while and, and, and what it can do and what, the possibilities are and, and of course you know some people will say yeah this is gonna i mean it's already changing the world but it's gonna change the practice as we know it a lot of people will not have a work you know will not have a, a job that's going to replace the designer and i'm i certainly i think it's a little bit like too too uh naive to to think that way but it's obviously means that everyone is going to have to catch up and and create kind of more authentic or more uh subtle ways of you know identifying their work and and of course you know ai will do what, what it does um and for sure uh, so uh talking about the uh, uh recent uh, uh discussions in architecture uh one of them definitely is the reusability and adaptability of the buildings and uh the, the way that our industry is, uh, construction industry is contributing to uh, climate change is also a, a considerable amount that uh, we have to think about. Uh, what, what do you think is, uh, what are your thoughts on the re re creating uh, architecture or the way that we can use the buildings even after the, their uh, functions are somehow not uh, uh, in in their place or we, we we can change their functions we can adapt them to different type of buildings and reuse them instead of demolishing and building in a, a new type of type of building what do you what are your thoughts on this yeah i'm I'm all for i mean you know like the most supposedly the most sustainable thing you can do with a building is try to preserve it you know as opposed to like you know demolish it and build brand new sometimes it's not possible to be given like 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 really large uh, processes and urbanization and 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 but i think when when possible i mean we certainly approach it that way we find it interesting and and in fact um you know m many of our work in, in in los angeles have like have some aspect of you know of so called adaptive reuse let's say you know there is an existing building that will you know, we'll get and we'll do a lot to it, but there's something there that's like a sandbox that you have to play with. And I think that, you know, all the aspects associated with the kind of, uh, you know, environmental crisis and produce, you know, and being a little bit more sustainable with the construction industry are are super crucial. It's, it's a really huge, slow 
and and uh, and not a really really high profit industry to change it you know so much and so it's always kind of complicated and 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 I also feel like even the audience that that consume you know clients and so on they want they want to, they want to say this is sustainable they want to check the boxes but there's still a bit of a cynicism about it you know they want to do certain things uh or they they want the 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 pride that comes with you know saying you did that but then they don't want to be able to they don't want to take some of the discomfort that might be associated with that you know i mean the excessive use of you know air conditioning is one of the, the the aspects let's say that you see in maybe in the us although there, there's a lot of conscience about these things you know uh, i think you know materials and recycling and life cycle of things i mean these are things that i i would like to you if i said that these are front and center of what we do i think they're obviously part of the sphere you know we're always trying to find uh, as a practice and also and as, a, as educators meaningful ways of incorporating these problems without just making them much like often society and culture does like you know themes like, like you know or suddenly sustainability became important and then you have the sustainability awards you know and it's like who gives uh you know a, you know a damn about that if it's not good architecture you know if it's good architecture and it's great you know i mean it should be sustainable you know but if it's not good, I mean, I don't think you should want and you should win an award, you know. And and so, you know, so these are things that we are, uh, we have, we try to be positive and optimistic, but also be a little bit critical sometimes about what this sort of like name tagging and and this kind of uh, classification that that I mean in the U.S. we we see a lot, you know. And and I think that maybe that's a kind of our both sort of like. Uh, educators, architects idea that we try to be, you know, to question what, what does it mean? You know, what does it mean? What do you do? How do you do it? And uh, so as that you're not just relinquishing the, the real power of architecture to do what it does best and, and, and do so in a kind of more propositional way. You know? And you have been uh, well, uh, an architect who's been practicing and also an academia who's teaching in the school and, having uh, you know books and articles writing and educating students how does this feed into your uh, how does academia feed in your architecture and how does practicing an architect lets you to educate the next generations how how does this balance uh, you know the uh, how, how do you uh, use this as to keep your uh, architecture forward Ever since I finished school in, in Argentina, I, I wanted to, you know, of course, I, I wanted to be an architect. But for me, being an architect also was uh, being an educator, being uh, teaching was um, something I wanted to do. I felt like I had um, things to to explore. You know, I, I don't want to say give back. You know, it sounds a little too uh, humble. I'm maybe a little bit more selfish than that, and I think a lot of people are. And, and I think with the selfishness comes the 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 interest. Where like, um, I mean, I'm part of a culture and a school at Sayar, which was founded under the premise of um, creating a, a, a place, an environment, sort of halfway between the architect's studio and and conventional academia. Of course, we're more, much more academic than we, what we used to be. But still, as a sort of lively uh, side to it, that that I think it's important to me. It's it's uh, it's important to our office. You know, a lot of you know. I um, mean, my partner, uh, you know, is professor at UCLA. Um, but I think our 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 office has got a lot. You know, it's got a lot from SciArc. You know, it's got a lot of like former students that that teach that that work for us. And and so I often said, you know, we couldn't do the work we do if we were not related to academia. Having said that, we also try to make sure that that you know that we are outside academia because when it comes to like participating in real world, people are not going to hire you because you're an academic. You know, they're 
they, you know, you need to be a professional, you know, and so, um, but the idea that you're kind of part of the education process, you have, you know, you work with like incredibly talented young minds, um, that you bring problems to it and, and, and then together, you know, um, figure out like tentative solutions, tentative responses to those ideas. And uh, that's uh, super important. But one, one thing for me is important and that's that I always like, I could not, you know, I couldn't practice if I wasn't teaching the way I do. I couldn't teach if I wasn't practicing the way I do. Like I think every time I situate a new problem, a new uh, a new idea, that's my my approach. It has something to do with some of the problems, uh, things, uh, projects, ideas uh, that I encounter in the in the real world, and and then of course when it goes to my studios, when it goes to a design topic. It, it has, um, you know, it has a far more forward-looking idea, you know. And the same way, you know, we're obviously keen in incorporating some of the discussions that I think are selectively important and then often come to, you know, our own studios and our own discussions and reviews and so on. Right. And um, if you would like to share, like, uh, like if you haven't signed any NDAs or something, <laughs> do you, are you working with any projects in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> I did sign an NDS, you know, so I can, okay. I can, um, I can, I like, can say too okay. too much, you know. I mean, but uh, um, but we're you know working yeah. on some exciting projects and some new to come, and so I, I, I mean, all I can say is that I, I am very um, supportive and excited about what the the whole process of. Um, I don't know, urbanization is not the right word because there's already urban places. There's just like new ideas. And and I think it's an it's a very, very interesting and, and fertile environment to, to you know. So, so what do you think about uh, uh, projects like uh, the line and uh, uh, proposals that have been uh, coming from uh, many, some kind of leading architecture practices in the world, yes. so Tom Main and Morphosis, and and also uh, somehow uh, it reminds me of one of the projects uh, that uh, Liam Young had to uh, incorporate the whole world's uh, population in, in one city. Yes. So, uh, what are your thoughts on projects like this that are so much uh, looking utopia, or in some cases people say dystopian as well? Maybe you can share some some points. Um, I mean, we uh, we have some involvement with with uh, that project, um, not not a huge involvement. I mean, I'm I'm excited about the project. I think it's a I am excited about the premise of the idea of like a kind of radical con con conservation of the territory and and uh, and densification. Um, it's funny being. In this trip, um, I was, you know, I've been to Dubai before, and I've been to Abu Dhabi, but this time I was, I was in Dubai, and I tried to, I tried to walk and see new things, and I was obviously in Riyadh, and I was in Jeddah, and um, and uh, I was also in Beirut, and Beirut was maybe a bit of a different, you know, exception because you can walk your streets, and but I mean, in Dubai, it will, it will take me like. 40 minutes to 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 cross you know if i wanted to walk you know i had to take ubers just to go around and because there weren't even there were not like bridges there were not like it's not they're not cities made for pedestrians and it's a lot of things are happening in riyadh and even in Jeddah. and uh, although Jeddah maybe has better swatches of of uh, of uh, pedestrian aspects so i feel like the premise of creating a place you know like the line that it was going to be you know, we're not going to have cars there. You're just going to move and you're going to walk, you know, horizontally or move vertically. It is the right premise. Does it have to be, you know, that condensed? Does it have to be so high? Those are maybe things that I think a lot of people will, will, will have issues. And I certainly, you know, I, I will certainly think that there, there may be obviously other possibilities, but I'm I'm excited and I'm supportive of the, the endeavor. And as I think, 
you know, if it's like, you know, if not now, when, you know, if there is a possibility, if, like, I think it's, it's great that you have those kinds of approaches. And sure, I mean, at, like everything else, you'll have like, you know, remains to be seen how much, you know, I mean, there were like this uh, master city in Abu Dhabi by Foster, which, you know, in paper was one thing and the reality, I mean, it's, it's actually quite a nice place. I actually been there, I visited, uh, but still far from, from over, far from completed, far from realized. No? Yes, I mean, the whole idea about this question was not just to criticize because we, uh, as media uh, platform, we, we see no position for ourselves to criticize any project. We just uncover the truth and yeah. just share the news about uh, the recent developments. I'm a huge fan of the project and yeah. uh, we, we support <laughs> and we publish the line uh, and uh, developments by Neon and our platform a lot because we see a, a new vision and a new horizon yes. for architecture in, in this region. And yeah, we are just a supportive uh, media platform that shares the news. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have a few last questions. Is there any inspiring architect that you admire their work, living or not living? Yeah, many, many architects. Um, I am, uh, for one, you know, like... Um, uh, you know, I'm Argentinian, and, and 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 so I always like you know read a lot of uh, Borges. You know, Jorge Luis Borges was a kind of a you know really a famous uh, writer. And he he used to say something that he was proud of all the. I mean, he was a genius and and read some of the most amazing books. And he said, but he will say like kind of humbly and and arrogant at the same time. You know, that he was proud about all the books he had read, you know, uh, more than the books he had written. Of course, he could not have written what he wrote, you know, should not have read what he read. You know, same time, like somebody like Quentin Tarantino will, will also kind of talked about and quote so many movies and, and his work is kind of, you know, amazing. So I, I always look at many different people, including people that are maybe less known. And I, you know, and I'm kind of amazed by, by finding things in places that I didn't, you know, that I didn't expect. Uh, of course, I mean, like people like Corbusier were still like really important to me in my early education and as it is still today, or, or I don't know, somebody like Clorindo Testa in Argentina was, you know, pretty significant. So it's people like, I don't know, uh, somebody like Alvaro Sisa, who that's not exactly, you know, that's very some different than, than what we do, but it was very, very significant and, 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 and their work, uh, in terms of how to, you know, create something which is uh, kind of unique and a little bit like off of the 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 written path. But there, there's many people, of course, you know. Well, uh, awesome. And in closing, maybe can you share a couple of advices with young generation and uh, aspiring architects and young talents in this ever evolving world of architecture, technology, and the tools, advancements? How not to get lost and maybe. Your advices can be a candle and uh, a lighthouse in this vastness of ocean. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just think like um, you know, I remember when I was a, when I was still in Argentina, and, I, and and Peter Eisman came to for a buy-in. It was the first time that he came, and it was like during the kind of whole, you know, right after deconstruction, and and it was a big deal, and 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 of course he was presented with a bunch of like um, young people in Argentina trying to do his work and 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 he said something which is you know still sticks with me you know which is like you know be, be yourself you know find your own way and i would add like you know the, don't be scared of taking risk you know in fact take risks because those risks are going to maybe differentiate you know you from from the from the large crowd the mainstream the the people that are just kind of followers because every time had certain things that are important you know call it the digital whatever scripting tectonic material ai all of those things that's just things you know they're I, I wouldn't say they're just the means to an end because they're more than that but but you have to you have to do your own work you know whether you're a writer you're a historian you're you're a critic you're an architect you know you're an artist and and that means that at some point you know it's kind of like a I don't know if you have a dog, I have a dog, you know, when like they put these cones to the dogs, you know, so they can like lick themselves. You have to kind of, you know, you have to be aware of what's going on in the world. 
but at some point you have to have a super super narrow focus and concentrate on that focus and kind of solve your true and 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 then your time will come you know and if anything you'll have a you know more success in 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 in, in defining a territory for you and 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 for everyone else yeah awesome thank you so much marcelo and uh, it's really nice to have you in, in here uh, it was a nice conversation uh, appreciate your time no thank you it's my pleasure thank you for having me